This episode brought to you by our Quirks and Conjure Patreons. Pop on over to discover unique merch, maps of the locations of our shows, and more. If you ever wanted a way to say thank you for all of our content, tiers start at just $5 a month. Thank you, Patreons. Hi, my name is Rebecca. Over the years, I've lived and worked as a spiritualist and ghost tour guide in some of the most haunted cities in the United States. Now, I invite you to come along with me as I set out to discover even more. Together, we will venture across the country in search of the most horrific haunts and spooky stories. I'm Rebecca, the Ghost Guide. Just outside one of the fastest growing areas in the United States is a small historic town that predates most of the surrounding area. Nestled on the shores of the easygoing Eno River, Hillsboro, North Carolina, is now a sleepy and artistic little hub that once was the center of many historical dramas. And in a place that boasts more than 100 homes that date back to the 1700s and 1800s, it should be no surprise that I would come to visit looking for ghosts. You'll notice that this episode is going to take a different turn from some of my others. Rather than have a single episode with multiple stories in it, I have decided that it would be more efficient to release a number of episodes on each location I visit instead. That not only allows me to focus more on the stories themselves, but also spares you from having to carve out a chunk of your day to enjoy them. For this episode featuring Hillsboro, North Carolina, I will be taking you away from the bustling streets and historic homes so that we can visit a comparably newer construction that represents a much older story. So what are we doing? We are going to see a rebuilding of an Okanichi Native people's village. I like it. I'm really excited because yeah. they used to live right where we're walking right yeah. now. After being displaced already. Right. And then we're displaced again. Right. Despite the Okanichi people long outdating the time English explorers and later settlers lived in North Carolina, most of what we know of them is based off of those colonialist accounts. By the time the Okanichi settled in what is now modern-day Hillsboro, they had already been forcibly removed from their first place of residence near the North Carolina-Virginia border. Due to an engagement in one of the earliest defiances that would one day turn into the American Revolution, the English crown would institute a much higher force, not only against the settlers, but even more so against the Okanichi people who had sided with them during Bacon's Rebellion. After the raid, approximately 100 men, women, and children had been murdered by the English army. And so, the Okanichi people fled south, looking for a new place to settle that would allow them to continue their deer trade, as well as stay out of Virginia settler disputes. They settled along the shores of the Eno River, where they would find a home for the next 100 years before once again being driven out due to land discrepancies and disease introduced from the colonialists. They later would migrate to the Iroquois lands and eventually disappear from historical record in the southeast United States. Here's where I would like to admit my ignorance when it comes to having met spirits in the past. When I decided to go out and film the Okanichi Village reconstruction, I was mainly going there to get enough footage to be able to offer a foundation for the Hillsboro hauntings that were to come. Like many other historical places I have covered that offer countless ghost stories, I was expecting there to be a kind of darkness there where colonial souls were trapped and confused due to the crimes of their ancestors. While that may still be true, the point I'm trying to make is I never expected to run across the old souls of the Okanichi in a reconstruction project. So I'm getting the feeling that we're being watched right now. And it's kind of from all over. The river's old, the trees. The feeling that I'm getting is it's it's not necessarily bad, it's more the spirits that are around here still recognize or do recognize what's around us right now. 
because this area was home to the Okanichi people before they were wrongfully drawn out by settlers. And I think for so long, so many of the people who had died here were looking for signs of familiarity and they couldn't find it. And I think there's something healing about having this kind of reconstruction here because it's familiar. If you're wondering what in the world I'm talking about, my ability to experience the spiritual side of life has been growing quickly over the past year. Considering that my personal spiritual growth is an entire episode in itself, I'll leave you with this. I'm primarily what is understood as claircognizant. That means I know and may see pictures of images or places or people passed in my mind as a way to connect with spirits. While our episode at the historic Bergwin Wright House on tracking transition featured this, it will be the first time on Rebecca the Ghost Guide that I will be introducing these mediumship abilities. They've always been there in some sense. So there's a specific wigwam, I guess would be the... Thatched hut, I guess is the better term. Um, seems a bit simplistic, but I got too close and both of us got the feeling, no, no. She's like here um, and she's looking in front of this. I mean, she's kind of protecting it. It's kind of like this image of her being like, no, no, you're not coming in here. And, and the feeling that I'm getting is her saying that this is undone. It needs to be finished. And until it's finished, we shouldn't be in there because it could hurt the construction. And already, I mean, it needs to be redone. I think yeah. she recognizes that. And I think also I'm getting the sense that um, people have been away longer than they typically have been away, likely because of the pandemic. Um, and so there's this kind of feeling of, are they not going to come back? Have they left us? Is this going is this going to go away like it has before? There's this, there's this kind of fear of what's gonna happen now? What's gonna happen now? They didn't come back, they didn't come back. And I think that's kind of this reoccurring sort of trauma that's been going on. So really what I would like to relay is there's a, really big sickness that's been going on across just the entire world and so people have been staying inside they've been trying to protect themselves but we're getting better and we're bouncing back and at some point I feel like what what you have been used to is actually going to restore itself just right now people can't come together they can't safely come together and rebuild these things right now because it's just not safe it's in the air what we breathe in it's a uh, oh okay you still can't come in <laughs> <laughs> that's fine that's fine there's a little sense of gratitude but it's not it's not enough. It's like understanding is not enough. It doesn't fix, it doesn't fix it. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, she's like, mm -hmm. you can walk over there. You can walk over there. This is my, yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. I also feel I need to explain something to anyone who is a little less mediumship minded than myself. If you're thinking that there is no way for me to understand the language of these native peoples, you would be correct. However, keep in mind that language is using our five basic senses. Speaking with spirits involves a sixth sense. Spirits speak in a universal language that is steeped in emotion and expression. And I was about to get a first-hand lesson in just that. I would also like to note that I am unsure as to where exactly the Okanichi people are buried. However, according to my research, I did know that their burial grounds are most certainly nearby to the village reconstruction and that their settlement burial grounds would have been just outside their fortifications. 
any way you may try to spin it. The reality is that parts of Hillsboro are most definitely built on Native American burial grounds, and it would seem that some of those souls have chosen to take up residence alongside of where they once lived. So this is the Eno River. It is one of my favorite rivers. It backs up next to my favorite state park, which is the Eno River State Park. And both Jay and I have been talking about this kind of healing. And it's busy, it's so busy here. I'd have to say it's busier here than it is in the park for sure. And it's not just because the water's running faster. I, on the way here on walking out, I saw this little girl running past and she was laughing and it was almost like this feeling of they don't let me play in the village because I break stuff you know I'm not supposed to play in there so I come out here and play and then there's this little boy who came up and he's very proud of himself I mean he's like he's small <laughs> he's he, he he told me he's like I catch fish I'm very good at catching fish <laughs> it's almost like want to see me catch a fish <laughs> um, Really what I'm taking from all of this is something that I said before, even though this is a reconstruction, even though it is not original and what has been here has been lost to time until just recently some excavation, the amount of home that I feel from the spirits who have felt homeless for hundreds of years they were removed from their original territory that was off Roanoke Island. They were eventually moved to New Bern. They were moved out again, and then eventually they come here and disease ravages them and they have to move again, all because of colonialists. But the simple recognition, it just seems like it's become this kind of spiritual home for these lost souls who were looking for their tribe and they were looking for something familiar. It doesn't fix anything that happened, but the recognition has seemed to have offered some peace to the spirits out here. If you're also wondering how souls may venture to familiarity long after their original structures are gone, I wouldn't think too hard. Do you ever find yourself drawn to places or things that remind you of the feeling of home? Maybe a particular kind of structure, a sound, or even a taste takes you to a place in your memory that offers you peace? I think it may be the same for the souls I met. They seemed to have a general understanding that time had passed, but the common understanding that I feel we all can relate to is that of a feeling of home and what that means to each of us. I could feel a weight that comes with the long search for trying to find home at this site. And I could also feel the fear that comes with the knowledge that this may not be forever. And due to non-native peoples, they may once again be subject to land disputes and our own current disease. So what does this mean for me saying this or for you watching this? Perhaps the takeaway is that of recognition and empathy. Recognition for what these souls have lost as well as the temporary peace they have gained through buildings like this. Empathy to see that each of us may have a different idea of what home means, but to equally understand that our idea of home should never take away from another's. Such monuments to history will never offer redemption over the horrors that have been done but they do, in the very least, offer us in the present a chance to understand one another. I'm Rebecca the Ghost Guide. Thanks for watching. As always, all of my sources are located in the description if you would like to read further about Hillsboro and the Okanichi people. A big shout out to the city of Hillsboro for commissioning this project and the many volunteers who helped to build it. If you are interested in getting more involved or just to check out the location, be sure to check out the links below. And be sure to subscribe so that you won't miss my next Hillsboro episode, where we will travel uphill from the river to discover a very haunted schoolhouse. <laughs>